The previous video had two important motivating problems, the velocity problem and the distance traveled problem. And I'm going to finish the first of these. Let me remind you where the previous video stopped. I wanted to calculate the slope of a tangent line to a function using an approximation by secant lines. I have four secant lines, each getting closer and closer to the tangent line, and I want a limit of this process. If the two values were x and a, using a to indicate that one of these values is fixed and x to indicate that one of these is moving, then the slope of the secant line was the difference in the y-coordinates, the output, f of x minus f of a, over the difference in the x-coordinates, the input, x minus a. The approximation process worked by making the second point move closer and closer to the first. As a limit, this is the input x getting closer and closer to the fixed input a. Therefore, I can ask for the limit. As x gets closer and closer to a, what happens to the slope, this ratio f of x minus f of a over x minus a? This is why I needed limits as processes. I can't evaluate at x equals a. That leads to division by zero, which doesn't make sense. But I can approach. I can look at what happens as x gets closer and closer to a. This is the definition of the derivative. The limit of the slope of secant lines as the second point gets closer and closer to the first. This limit measures the rate of change of the function. If the function is position, this is velocity. If the function is population, this is population growth or decay. This is the thing that algebra couldn't calculate, but now, with limits, I can calculate and understand. I've already mentioned the notation for derivatives, but let me remind you. There are two common notations, f prime of a, with this little apostrophe called prime, and df over dx of a, this notation which looks like a fraction but isn't really. The first is called Newton's notation, and the second, second is called Leibniz's notation. I will use both, and both are acceptable in this course. However, I do have a preference for the Leibniz notation in most settings, and will use it for the majority of the time. There are a couple subtle variants of this limit. Instead of letting x get closer and closer to a, I could measure the distance between the two inputs. Let me call this h. As x gets closer to a, h gets closer to 0. I can replace x minus a with h in the denominator and x with a plus h in the first function to get a slightly different version of the limit. This is the same idea still calculating the slope of the tangent lines, but it turns out that this form with a single h in the denominator turns out to be a fair bit easier to work with. It also allows another very important observation. This derivative, f prime of a or df dx of a, is the slope of the tangent line at some point x equals a. It's a calculation at a specific point a. However, in this form, I can replace a with x with the generic independent variable. And this allows this last line, f prime of x, or df over dx. This is the derivative as an entirely new function. This is the function which measures the rate of change of the original function at all points. If f is position, f prime is velocity and can be evaluated anywhere. I get an entirely new function, one which measures the rate of change of the original at all its points. Let me go back to the Leibniz notation for a moment. df over dx is the derivative, the new function which measures the rate of change of the previous function. I can adjust this notation slightly, pulling the d over dx out in front of the function f. In this way, I can think of d over dx as an agent, as something that acts on the first thing put in front of it. It is the thing that takes a derivative. I call this a differential operator. It's a very useful piece of notation. By itself, it doesn't mean much, but with any function, it means calculate the derivative, the rate of change. It can also reflect the independent variable, which is the main reason I prefer Leibniz notation. If x is the independent variable, d over dx is the thing that takes derivatives in that variable. If instead time, written t, is the independent variable, then d over dt is the thing that takes derivatives. This could work for any independent variable. If a were the independent variable, d over dA is the thing that takes derivatives. 
I'll make frequent use of this differential operator notation in the remainder of the course. Before finishing, let me talk about this limit a bit. The derivative is defined by a limit, but as I've talked about in the previous weeks, limits don't always exist. What happens when the limit that defines a derivative doesn't exist? Well, then the derivative doesn't work. Not all functions are differentiable. Sometimes the slope of the tangent line is not defined. There are two main ways that a function can fail to be differentiable. If the function is discontinuous at a point, then the tangent line doesn't really make sense anymore. The sudden jump messed, messed with any notion of rate of change, and the derivative limit just doesn't work. If the graph of a function has a sharp corner, likewise the slope of the tangent line also doesn't make sense. There are many lines that I can draw which are, so to speak, tangent to a sharp corner. The rate of change isn't defined, and the limit of, that defines the derivative would just fail. For the purposes of this course, these are really the only problems. For functions without jumps or sharp corners, the derivative will be defined and the function will be differentiable. Finally, at the risk of repetition, let me talk again about the meaning of the derivative. I'm going to be jumping into a lot of calculation in the next few videos. When the calculation gets more intense, it's easy to forget about the meaning carried by all the symbols. A derivative means two things. It is the slope of a tangent line and the rate of change of the function. Keep this in mind. As you move on to calculate derivatives, remember that you are always calculating something that has meaning. This is what the derivative is. It is the thing that captures these two ideas, the slope of the tangent line and the rate of change.